Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings and top 100s every year and today that's what we're going to be doing, we're going to be continuing our top 100 board games of all time. This is number, fuck me, I keep forgetting, number 70 down to 61. We're starting to push ourselves into that area where games are starting to get a little bit more exciting than the other shitty games that have been at the arse end of the top 100. So if you ain't already subscribed to this channel, hit the like button, comment all the crap. We'll see you after this. Bollocks. So number 70 on this list is a game that we got rid of a little while ago. We got fed up with it, yeah? It's Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, we got rid of this because it went on for too long and we preferred Shadows over Camelot and Dead of Winter and all that sort of thing. But we went to get it again and it was out of print. It was going for like silly money on eBay. I wasn't ready to give up my other kidney just to play this game. So we went and bought the Spanish version. I painstakingly went and translated it myself from some files that I found on the Vassal module. So if you look over this, that is the best way forward. It cost you about 20 quid to buy the game and just about 100 hours of sweat, blood and tears, right? In Battlestar Galactica, you'll be taking on the role of some of the characters from the seminal TV show of yesteryear. And you will be trying to convince people that you ain't a fucking Cylon when you're a fucking Cylon. You'll be moving around the ship, trying to cause as much havoc as possible if you're a Cylon. And if you're not a Cylon, then you'll be trying to put out fires to delay the possible inevitability of you croaking it. But if you can survive and get to Cobalt, then you'll be able to win the game, which is highly unlikely. Battlestar Galactica is a very, very long game. It takes about four hours or so to play. It plays at a six player, so that's a good thing. Hello? What, what do you mean? You're not getting anything for Christmas. But the main draw of this is the theme, right? It closely follows the atmosphere of the TV show down to the abilities of the characters and also the negative abilities of the characters. Yeah, they've got pros and cons attached to them. So if you're looking for a game that has a hidden traitor element, it's like a step up in complexity from games like Dark Moon, Dead of Winter and Shadows over Camelot, then Battlestar Galactica is definitely worth the effort of spending 18 hours of translating it from fucking Spanish. So number 69 on this list is a dice chucking worker placement game called Alien Frontiers, right? This has seen about five different editions over the years, right? But it's still a fantastic game. You'll be rolling dice and then you'll be assigning these dice to different locations and taking actions associated with these spaces, right? You might want to go out and mine resources. You might want to improve the control of areas on the board, right? You'll be trying to build these settlements that will give you points due to the area control, right? I'd recommend getting the factions expansion, which adds special abilities to your faction. But even if you don't want to get that, Alien Frontiers is a very, very simple game, but it's also a very, very enjoyable game. It can get a little bit long sometimes. So just bear that in mind if you're thinking about picking this up. And don't worry about picking up all those little mini expansions you can find for like 99p in your local bargain bucket shop they're not really worth it but yeah alien frontiers a wonderful dice chucking worker placement game that whilst it's sort of getting old it's still quite a good game number 68 is another game set in space it's cosmic encounter this game was first released in 1977 and it's still going strong today there's about 7,000 different alien races available for this game now in this game you will be trying to gain control of a certain number of planets by landing your little spaceship on those planets and booting everybody else off it's a card driven combat system where you'll be assigned an opponent and then you'll be playing cards with attack strength on them and other abilities like flares to try and do your opponents over but all the while you'll be inviting other players into your battles and offering them some sort of incentive to do so right this game is a little bit chaotic some of the alien races special abilities are a little bit obtuse and a little bit difficult to understand sometimes they don't really work well together right but that's part of the charm of this game the chaos and the confusion that's involved in this makes it a bloody good laugh and there's a reason this has been going strong for about 30 odd years cosmic encounter is some people's favorite game of all time we obviously haven't gone that far down a rabbit hole but yeah we still do enjoy a good punch up in our space so number 67 on this list is a game that started awful a lot of people is Catan, right? 
all the settlers of Catan, as we like to call it. So in Catan, you will be rolling dice and you'll be getting resources based on where you have placed your settlements and cities, right? Then you'll be trading resources to build more settlements and cities, or maybe get a few night cards or get the longest road that will give you victory points that will allow you to win the game. You get 10 points, you win. A lot of people don't like Catan these days. They are heretics. They just don't like it because it's old and it's been played to death. It's still a wonderful game. We still have an absolute blast playing this. I'll play it anytime, anywhere, against anyone. There's loads of expansions for this. There's a Seafarers expansion, the Citizen Knights expansion, and a few others. I don't generally play with any of the expansions, maybe the Seafarers now and again, but the others I don't generally bother with. I do like Vanilla Catan because it's quick, it's simple, and it's always an absolute laugh. If you haven't played Catan, go out and get it. It's a very important piece of board gaming history. Change the face of board gaming, and just don't listen to those knobheads that tell you Catan shit because it ain't, right? So number 66 on this list is a game... 66? Six, six. It's fucking El Jotoro. How weird's that? This is a game that was set to replace the second edition of Archon Horror by stripping it back and streamlining it. And in the end, it became even more bloated than the original Arkham Horror, right? Eldritch Horror sees you, again, trying to put out fires. It's a cooperative game. You'll be fighting against one of the ancient old ones out of Lovecraft's mythos sort of thing. And different threats will be popping up all over the world. You'll be traveling around different countries and different continents, trying to put these fires out, defeat monsters, and try and fulfill the requirements to defeat the old one right when i first played this the, the content was a little bit thin on the ground i know it promised to streamline arkham horror quite a bit and it went off the scales in streamlining there was basically nothing in the box right but now there's probably too much content there's a wealth of content that will take you a lifetime to get through every game's different because of that if you've got all the little mini box expansions all the big box expansions there's a wealth of content for this and the game tells some wonderful stories maybe a little bit disjointed because you get random things happening and random things popping up even so it's a great adventure game and it's one that we will keep coming back to again and again and again so number 65 on this list is another game that we fell out of love with it's terraforming mars it's come back to the fold because we picked up a couple of the mini expansions like the prelude expansion and the extra map pack so it's reinvigorated the game right terraforming mars is a card driven game every round you'll be playing cards into your tableau that allow you to do different things you'll be trying to build cities on Mars, you'll be trying to change the landscape to lakes and rivers and forest. You'll be trying to improve the atmospheric conditions, the temperature of Mars. And once all those requirements are met, the game's over, and then you're tired of your victory points, right? This is a wildly popular game. I don't really understand why it's that popular. It's not as good as some people say it is. It's produced really sort of iffy bolt-on games like the Ares Expedition or something, which I haven't played it myself, but I've heard from a few mates of mine it's not that great it's got to the point now they're trying to milk the cash cow for all it's worth but that doesn't detract from the fact that terraforming mars is a very very solid euro style tile lane game with some wonderful card drafting mechanics and uh, yeah do enjoy it quite a bit so number 64 and assist is a game by Uwe Rosenberg. Remember we said that Le Havre is sort of celebrated as Uwe Rosenberg's finest hour, or maybe it was. I know some people say that Feast of Odin is his best game, but yeah, this is our favourite Uwe Rosenberg game. It's Agricola. This is a medieval farming simulator. Who would have thought that farming in the Middle Ages would have been so much fun. In this game, you will be placing your workers out onto the board and taking an action associated with that space. Nobody can go to the space that you've been to. You'll get occupations that will give you special abilities that will change the game up. There's loads and loads of different expansions, loads and loads of decks of cards of this. So every game is going to be different. It's a wonderful, wonderful worker placement game. It was the top of the Devil website's top 100 for years and years and years. And uh, yeah, we really do like Agricola. We keep coming back to it. There's just something charming about it, right? Yeah, Agricola, a medieval farming simulator where you can voluntarily starve your family to death. Number 63 on this list is a game that sees you trying to chase a vampire around Europe. It's Fury of Dracula. This is a game that is based upon the core mechanics of Scotland Yard. It's a one versus all game where you'll be chasing a villain around a map. Fury of Dracula takes this one stage further by adding loads of extra bits and pieces. So when you think about Scotland Yard, Mr. X, he couldn't fight back. He just had to run away like the coward he was. But in this, Dracula can fight back with every sinew in his body. He can bite, he can scratch, he can kick. 
and at the end of the day it's a very very thematic game the component quality is absolutely fantastic i'm a little bit torn between which version i like whether i like the old fantasy flight second edition or the new third stroke fourth edition i don't know about that fear of dracula a great one versus all game that looks the dog's bollocks and we really enjoy it Number 62 on this list is a game called Quacks of Quedlinburg. This game came out of nowhere to shock people to a Spiel des Jahres win a few years ago. This is a bag building game where you'll be placing ingredients into the bag and you'll be drawing them out of the bag, pushing your luck in the hope that your cauldron doesn't explode. Like most push your luck games, this is really, really exciting. You do feel like your ass is perched on the edge of a well-sharpened knife when you're playing this, when you're drawing those little tiles out of the bag, you can feel like that turd's poking its tongue out, right? Like I said, this shocked people. It came out of nowhere. Nobody knew anything about this, and it just blew people's minds. It's a highly enjoyable game. It's a throwback to the golden era of the Euro game about 10 or 15 years ago. It's got that sort of atmosphere to it, and that's why we really, really enjoy playing Quacks of Quedlinburg. So the final game in this segment, number 61, is a game by Jamie Stegmaier. It's Tapestry, right? This on the surface looks like a very, very simple game. Basically, what you'll be doing is you'll be moving one of your tokens up a number of tracks and taking the action associated with the space that you land on. However, it's one of them games that seems to branch out the further in you get because there's ramifications for each thing that you do. It's like a flow diagram. You start off with one little bit and then it branches off and branches off and branches off and then it becomes sort of, not complex, but complex enough for my pea-sized brain. Like all of Stone My Games games, it's got some wonderful components, yeah. It does feel like it's a little bit too blinged out with some of the miniature buildings, but the fact is this game drew me in. It was so simple to get into. You find that doors are opened as you play this game, right? There's two expansions for this. We'll be doing a review of the new expansion at some point when we get this to the table. Once I probably when I'm done wasting hours and hours of my life doing this but yeah tapestry took us by surprise we weren't expecting it to be this good and it is that good and we still play it today love it so there you go that's the fourth is it the fourth i think it's the fourth segment of our top 100 board games of all time do you agree with our list so far where do you think some of the other games are going to be on this list right let us know in the comments below subscribe hit the like button all that crap and we'll see you next time